Hey, what is up questers and welcome back to BMF, the unofficial home for all things Oculus Quest. Today we're going to check out V29, the latest update for the Oculus Quest platform. I'm going to give you a walkthrough with the new menu system, showcase the internal recording and show how that works, among a few other things, as well as talk about 120 hertz and show you some footage from AirLink with 120 hertz and how it works to set it up. Let's go ahead and do it right now. All right, here we are inside of the Quest 2 with version 29, and you can see right away that the menu system, the UI has been updated. Let's start with that since that's one of my least favorite parts about this update and how it actually works. One cool thing about the update, though, is that the controllers actually have battery indicators on their tops of the controllers. You can see right there that they each show it's not a percentage, which would be nice if you could add the percentage in, but at least gives you battery indicators for uh, how much battery power your controllers have left. There is an indicator for the headset, but it's not right on the dashboard anymore, which I did like. You do have to go into the quick menu to get to it, and I'll talk about that in just a second. The bar down here has new icons, which I don't mind the pops of color, uh, but I tend to forget which one's which. I'll get used to it over time. This one's an explore button. This one brings you to this tab right here where you can explore new updates or news or recommendations and all that stuff. Friends list, there's your explore tab over there. You can hit the store button, this brings you to the store, obviously. It allows you to check out what's uh, new and all that stuff in the normal store. This is your people tab. It just brings up your tab for people with your uh, friends and all that kind of stuff going on. And then you've got the share button. Now this is recording right now. There's some tests that I was doing with different recording stuff, taking photos, going live and casting. Now, that's gonna bring us into recording in just a second. But for now, I'm gonna actually switch over to the internal microphone. It is working to record internally. So right now, I'm gonna switch over to the internal microphone. So this is the internal microphone of the Quest 2 recording on the actual Quest 2 mic that you use when you do audio for multiplayer. And it's really cool to have the ability to do that and it actually is going to allow syncing in post to, to be a lot easier, for me at least, because I record separate audio tracks. The issue that I have with it though is there's no way to turn it off. <laughs> Let me show you that. Uh, first of all, in order to get to the settings, the, there's no settings button on the bar anymore. Now I go into settings a lot because I adjust settings, I check things, especially when I'm checking updates, all these different things. Not a lot of people do that, but it's still a little bit of a pain to not have the settings bar on here. When you hit the button here, the apps button, you can see that this is where the settings bar is. So you've got all your same buttons here, events, you got TV too. But your settings button or, or access is right here. Now that means that it's because it's part of these applications, you have to click that button and it'll move down every time you use a game. So if I use five games before I go into settings or six games, it's gonna be down here. If I use, you know, multiple games and I don't click on settings, it's going to be below the bar down here, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Now, I'm not trying to be lazy. I just think that it's a bad idea to put this into this bar because depending on how many games you play and how often you get into it, you might be scrolling down. Now, there is a quicker way to actually get into the settings. The quicker way to get into settings is actually there's a bar down here, a little button. It says quick settings right here. By the way, you click your name here for your profile and there's your notifications. You hover over this. This actually tells you your battery power and your controller power is just your quick menu. And now your battery power for your headset is right there, but I liked having the percentage on the bar. That was one of my favorite things because then I know exactly how much battery I have left. In this menu system, you can adjust the brightness, the volume. There is this button here. If you click it, you're not going to be able to see anything. It'll be black around the edges, but that's my pass through home. So that means it's easy to jump into being able to look around the room that you're in. That just You click on that button once and it pops open, so you, now you're in your pass-through home environment. You click it again, and it's on the environment, uh, the regular home environment that you have. You've got Do Not Disturb, which I've got here. There is a night display mode, which I've had for a while. They say that that's new. I'm not sure why they say that, because you hit that button, and it turns it to night display mode, like that. And you can turn that on and off, which, uh, which is good, because it actually uh, reduces your eye strain, and it can make it so that your eyes aren't hurting. Um, if you are playing it at night or anytime really, it kind of reduces the amount of blue light, supposedly. Uh, you've got your Oculus Air Link button here, Wi-Fi, Guardian, all that stuff. Okay, so now you can click on the settings button and that brings you to your normal settings. Now, talking about recording, there is no way to turn it off, okay? And so if you go down in here, you can go to this device right here. You can turn off the microphone by hitting mute microphone. 
Now that'll mute it altogether. It means it won't record internally, but it also won't let you talk to people in multiplayer. Uh, for if someone like me, it's a pain in the butt because if I use this audio and I try putting the audio from my mic over top of it, which I'm going to do right now, so now I've got both audios working, I'm not sure how it's going to sound. This is a test for me to see how it's going to work because having one over top of the other is usually a bad idea when it comes to audio. But I can't turn that off and play multiplayer games, which is kind of a pain in the butt for me. For a lot of people, it won't matter. But for me and for a lot of content creators, it is going to matter and it's going to kind of be a pain if you want in-game audio. So those are some of the some of the updates to the UI and to the microphone itself. Now, what other updates do we have? Up, down, cross, cross, up, down. For me, the single biggest update for this update was actually the AirLink. For me, the single biggest part of V29 was the update to AirLink. That is my favorite part completely out of all of the entire update, to be totally honest, and I'll tell you why. Not only does it add 120 hertz in, which wasn't even announced in the blog post or in the release notes as far as I know, this has become really, really stable. Let me show you how easy it is to jump in. So I've got my PC on and I've got the Oculus software running. And plus, if you don't have AirLink enabled in the settings, it'll turn itself off after 24 hours uh, if you have not used it. So you gotta make sure that's enabled in settings. So you're gonna hit AirLink right here. It's gonna show you the computer that's available. You're gonna hit launch and it's gonna launch us right into the Rift platform. Now this has become super, super stable. See how fast that was? Loads us right in and you can go right to your library. Pick a game. Um, let's do Stormland since I've been testing that out. Uh, we'll use local data. And that'll pop us right into Stormland and allow us to be able to jump right into the game that quick. So now we're loading into the game right now. I'm going to show you a little bit of this just so you can see the difference in latency um, and how good it actually looks. Now keep in mind, this might not be you know mind-blowing um, because the recording capabilities of the Quest 2 are somewhat lacking in a lot of ways when it comes to recording PC VR stuff. And I've been getting some weird glitchiness to the uh, the connection for some reason, but this is it right here. See how fast that was? Oh, I got no bullets left. I just went from being inside of the quest to being inside of the essentially a rift in a matter of seconds and it works perfectly. So see, you can see, I'm not sure how easy it is to tell, but I'm not saying loser, by the way, either. I'm just, there, now I am. <laughs> but you can see the latency is very, I was surprised at how little latency issues there are, even with turning your head up and down. See, with it, with Link, both connected and Air Link and virtual desktop, if you shake your head fast enough, your recording generally stutters. It has issues. I have not seen that happen in Air Link in the last few days of me testing it. Plus, it looks really, really good. I don't know why it just looks it looks it's just it's looks really good. I mean I know why. It just looks way better than I expected it to. And it functions really really well. Uh even at fast pace with a lot going on on the screen it's playing some other games and it just works really really well. If you haven't played this game by the way, it's actually kind of an un, um a hidden gem really. I love this game. I think it's I think it's really fun. I still haven't finished it yet, but I I start just downloaded it again to start over again because uh I wanted to replay it. And I think it's really, it's really cool. But anyways, this is why I love it so much. 120 hertz on the Oculus Quest 2 for PC VR. It loads up really easy. And you can just pop in and out of games. You can quit the application. You can pop in another game if you want. So let's go into Boneworks. See if that loads up. That's loading. So we went from Storeland. Let's go into Boneworks. And this is all dependent on how fast my computer wants to load it. But it's loading in right now. And this is loading into Steam, by the way. That's why I did this. And the latency is just surprising how good this is. So this is loading into the Steam platform. So we just went from playing an Oculus game into Boneworks loading on Steam VR, And here we are inside of Boneworks. It's already loaded. Well, let me reset my view really quick. Maybe that'll help. No, well, maybe not. <laughs> I guess I'm turned the wrong direction. That doesn't matter. We'll turn it when we get in here. But see, this is this is how good. Confirm. There we go. There we go. This is how fast it is to get into PC games. And it works really, 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 really well. And it's just really cool. And it looks really good too. I was surprised, honestly, at how well that this function. I did a comparison. I've been doing comparisons. It's hard to capture comparisons, which is why I haven't shown anything. Um, 
on the channel really yet. It's hard, really, really hard to capture comparisons for uh, graphics between VD, Virtual Desktop, and Oculus Link because, and I've done that before and it worked, but I hate doing it because you get some artifacts on either platform and it never looks as good as it seems. I could record the screen of my PC, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't really be honest showing of what it looks like because that's just showing what my PC is rendering. It's not showing what we're seeing inside the headset. But when you're playing the game, it is much, 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 much better than you're seeing on the recording right now. And it just plays. I've never, I don't know. I Some games on PC playing through both Link and Virtual Desktop would give me some motion sickness at times just because sometimes there was some stuttering. It wasn't perfect. Um, it's it's way better both in Virtual Desktop and in, in the Air Link now. But the fact that Air Link is so fast and seamless just blows my mind. So this, in my opinion, is the best part of the newest V29 update. There you go, there is the update for V29 on the Oculus Quest 2. Personally, I really like this update, except for the new menu system. I'm not thrilled about that, and I'm also really not thrilled about the fact that you can't control the internal voice recording on the microphone without having to shut the mic off entirely. It's gonna be a pain in the butt, at least for us content creators. For everyone else, I guess it doesn't really matter, but for us, it's gonna be a pain when we have a microphone designed to do that, and we can't have control over whether we can record the mic internally or not. I really do like, though, AirLink with 120 hertz. I think that is a great update. It's really stable now, and it works really well to play any of the games on the Quest or Steam VR platform. What do you think about the update? Do you have it yet? What are you looking forward to the most? If you don't, let me know down in the comments. And if you want to get the most out of your Quest and your Quest 2, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and the bell icon for notifications. Plus, you can check out even more of my videos right over there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and happy questing.